Right. Joining us in studio, her official introduction, uh, County Administrator Joy Andrews. Joy, thank you so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Um, so I uh, got the pleasure of seeing you out there at the Canwright House yesterday. That was a big celebration. Yeah. Um, talk to me about what went into making that happen from a St. John's County perspective, because it seemed like there were a lot more people working on this than Troy told us. Troy told us it was just him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that may be why I didn't see you, because the toy dominated the whole show. He, he whole did. Show. That's, well, that's kind of his MO. That's what he does. He did a lot. <laughs> he he did. really did. He did. Well, it actually started with um, Karen Wright, which was, was the home, um, the house owner. Um, so he was getting ready to demolish the home because he was getting ready to rebuild a house um, in Butler Beach area. Mm -hmm. So then the question became whether or not um, we let him demolish it or mm -hmm. whether or not we should preserve it. So it's a and very historical house. I mean, one of the is. most famous pictures of Dr. Martin Luther King was him pointing at that window yes. with the bullet hole. Yes. And that is the house that yes. that happened in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He was going to stay in that house until there was a vandalization, a vandalization happening mm -hmm. before he could even do that. So um, Cultural Resource Council with St. John's County wrote a letter to the Board of County Commissioners um, really pointing out the historical significance of the house and essentially what you just said, what happened um, at the time of the civil rights movement and then how that house was vandalized. And um, there was that picture, historical. Um, so Parks Foundation, St. John's County, really took the initiative. And so they started to lobby the state legislators. Mm. And they were very successful. Sh uh, Shorty Robinson, who was the, um, well, still is the legislative aide for Representative Stevenson, um, they played an instrumental role in securing $400,000 for the purpose of relocation. At the time, mm. The board, I believe, Commissioner Waldron was very vocal about, you know, we need to do something about it. And uh, we ended up sending a letter to the Cultural Resource Council and owner and basically saying that we'll do everything we can to preserve the house. Um, at the time, Commissioner Waldron proposed that maybe it can be moved to Wingswept um, um, Park, mm -hmm. uh, which was very close to Butler um, Beach. Well, we received a lot of opposition around the neighborhood and, you know, some of them basically said that this is not going to be a very sightful thing for the neighbors, which was very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So so the board really went through quite a bit of a controversial process to to identify where this house can be located safely and mostly appropriate and mostly appreciated. Yeah. So Commissioner Arnold actually one day had um, breakfast with the West Augustine leaders, Greg White, Duwala, Robert Nemes. And next thing you know, he, uh, well, she gave me a call, said Greg White wants it. West Augustine wants it. I said, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. I cannot think of a better location for that house. So, um, and then Troy got involved. Of course, I know. <laughs> of course. Like, How do we move this thing? <laughs> it was just, and uh, it was amazing. So Parks Foundation worked with um, Troy, with a Cultural Resource Council, with the West Augustine. Uh, we went through a few iterations of where the location should be. Should that be on um, Holmes Boulevard? Should that be on the West King? Um, so we ended up deciding, everybody agreed to that facing the firehouse, the fire station on West King, on the park, right next to the arch would be the most amazing place. And that's yeah. where it ended up with. And, and then, of course, the rest, everybody knows that that house going, um, what, two miles an hour for right. days. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> for days. Yeah. We were all like clutching our pearls. Making sure we yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was amazing. So, yeah, so that was kind of the history of, and that, that was, gosh, few years of mm -hmm. making yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. but um it, it looks amazing you see it it looks yeah. amazing um so many people showed up yesterday the amazing dance did you see that yeah, yeah. oh my gosh yeah. i was tearing up like these girls are incredible yeah so put their hearts uh, in that. Yeah, yeah the whole community was so excited um the house looks really good i told Troy, you did a great job renovating this and he was showing me um you know, the, the renovation had to be done, the floor, the, the ceiling, mm -hmm. but the bullet hole was still there. Um, 
on the window. Yeah. So, wow. um, so I am really hopeful. Parks and Recreation of St. Johns County, Ryan King, Jamie Bakari. I mean, they are troopers. They and I think they really have great plans. They want this to be a real museum for the community, not just West Augustine, but yeah. for really Northeast uh, Florida, that they can come and see not only the house but the future artifacts. Um, the house really is kind of designed for a museum and mm. you can actually bring more artifacts, which brings to the topic of Black History Museum. And that's that what I was gonna, afraid to ask you about. That's that's what what I was that would be talk a, amazing, about. that yeah. would be an amazing addition um, on sort of this little itinerary that we're going to create for our future Black History Museum. Yeah. yeah. So where are we at on that? Because yeah. I understand we're, you know, we're just, uh, I think somebody said like uh, uh, an eyelash away from bringing that to St. John's County at this point. Who still needs to sign off on that to make that official? Has the governor signed off on that? Where are we at? So the last uh, task force meeting, the task force members voted to advance St. John's County to be the location to be recommended right. to the governor. Uh, well, to the governor, but the legislature as a whole has to approve it. So you talk about House and um, Senate leaders with the governor. Um, so the next task force meeting, uh, allegedly the last one, and we're hoping is going to be the last one, is this Friday, 9.30 okay. a.m. Prayers up, and everybody. Prayers up, and it is going to be um, 9.30 a.m. It's a webinar only. I think they're sick of okay. us going there. So staring, what? So staring, I mean, we, are, we, are show, <laughs> we are showing up in force out so there. I mean, uh, we are making a show and letting people know that we want this here. Yeah, in yeah. yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I mean, the support is and this. This thing is like the most amazing I've ever experienced. Probably my entire life. Like yeah. it's a thing that nobody feels like it's. It's, it's about them. It's about the whole community. It's about the goal. Yeah. So, and I, we were just talking, um, our internally, we were thinking like, oh my gosh, you know why this thing is so exciting? Because there is a goal that is bigger than any of us and that we're all going towards the same direction, either through fire, either through, you know, whatever that we have to do. Right. Right. So our expectation is this Friday, the task force is going to vote to finalized the recommendation and really put that on uh, the governor's desk uh, okay. for him to sign. Okay. okay. The next thing would be funding. So um, that will be something that we'll talk about right after that. Okay. And that location, we're thinking right near where the the house is now, right? Where the, where it is uh, somewhere in that area. It is, it is somewhere in that area. So it is on the campus of Florida Memorial uh, right. University. Yes. Um, it is about five, well, less than five, probably four miles. If you go on 214, you turn left on Holmes, mm -hmm. so you go west. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be uh, previously the arch of the actual university. So it's not right off uh, Holmes at this time. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Florida Memorial University is 100% committed. Um, the two representatives from the university's board came visit with us a couple months ago. And so we walked the site. It's overgrown at this point, okay. but the site is ready. <laughs> um, so I think there is still room for discussion on the ideal location for this museum because once we are identified as the location, I think the next um, conversation has to be, what do we have to do to make this successful? And I think the location is going to be one of the really important elements. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. It sounds like all we need to do is cut some grass out there and do a little bit of landscaping yes. and we're good to go. And get the 313 through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, there have been some updates on some uh, some appropriations. We just got some money coming in, correct? Yes, $26.5 million, thanks okay. to our That's state legislators. Okay, That's It is good. amazing. Now it what is are we going to be using that for? So um, I think we have 7.5 allocated for our central training, uh, fire training facility, Great. which okay. is very much needed. Um, and I think it's 6.5 for 2209, which is going to finish the entire 2209 expansion from, well, really it's to four lane, but it's going from Silverleaf Parkway all the way to 16. Okay. Um, so that's going to complete that project, which is going to alleviate the traffic that we were seeing earlier. I think it really is a 
um, offset for 95 and 16. Joey, so roads are so expensive, be, like major. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, combination of many things, I think, um, you know, construction costs that is high um, because one, you know, it's supply chain through COVID um, and also the standard of FDOT, they are ever changing for safety. Um, so, yeah, so, I, you know, sometimes if you, it, it is going to be, um, it is going to be lower than what we have been seeing because the construction cost is coming down, but it's not by a lot. So, yeah, yeah. that's, it is what it Interesting. is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Use my own yeah, <laughs> phrase that I can't stand. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> well, that's Sorry, good. That's def- <laughs> <laughs> well, that's definitely an area that, that yeah. needs to be worked on yeah. for traffic and, purposes. Yeah. For and then sure. in addition to the, uh, to the projects that I was just talking about, we have, um, 6.5 for South Ponte Vedra, uh, beach renourishment. And if you guys been there, you know it can use it. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Lincolnville uh, Museum is going to receive 225K for the, uh, the, the grounds, the parking lot improvement. Great. And it really can use it. The drainage is terrible out there. I mean, being in the city of St. Augustine, it's an overall problem. That's awesome. And I and I, I may be reading into it, but I'm thinking if the governor did not veto a a Black History Museum that we have and the boat the the, the really the best one we have so far, that may be a good sign mm-hmm. for him to give us more money. Yeah. For yeah. the real uh, state uh, Black History Museum, it'll be like the greatest trifecta of all civil rights, like yeah. right there in yeah. our town. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. And then Street Row 16 is going to get uh, 7.5, which is going to match uh, Representative Rutherford uh, was very successful. And I mean, he really went out his way to help us with the 16. And that was the reason why we were able to leverage the four million year mark. Rutherford was able to secure for us. And now we have the 7.5. So I feel good about 16 expansion with this allocation without being vetoed. And governor vetoed a lot. We mm-hmm. have quite a few projects who are vetoed. Okay. Now, uh, uh, when we're talking about Tallahassee mm-hmm. and those folks up there, it's it's an interesting year this year because a lot of those folks that are so close to St. John's County live in St. John's County um, and that, that have been very, very dependable for St. John's County mm-hmm. over the last few years. Cindy Stevenson, um, your Travis Hudson, um, Representative Renner. Um, these folks are all, all out after this year, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. So how does that affect some of, some of these things, some of these appropriations and other things that we have to go through Tallahassee for, how do you see that impacting what St. John's County is going to be able to bring home, uh, in the future? Well, that's a really great question. And that is really, um, sort of assumption that we have been operating on. And so in order to really tackle that, which is really the big loss of our very supportive legislators is to really create um, new relationships. And then of course, you know, um, Representative Garrison out of Clay County is going to be uh, a very key leadership role um, in, in Tallahassee. So we have developed really good relationship with Sam uh, Garrison. Um, and we really have a, a, a quite a few mutual um, visions and you know that includes mental health includes trails and things like that so we have had quite a bit of conversation with him and and of course it really depends on who who knows who's going to be elected or not you know you're getting all these crazy junk mails every day on, on all these, all these yeah. uh, election stuff but um our mentality has always been you know, you know it really doesn't matter whoever's going to be elected our approach is always going to be relationship building. And uh, we we take every opportunity to bring these legislators or legislators elected um, to St. John's County to see what we have. We think we have a compelling story to tell. We just have to do a really good job to tell that story and how that story can be better with their help and with money. So <laughs> yeah. um, so that's, uh, that's it. And then um, in terms of lobbying effort, um, it is something that most our residents don't, I mean, they don't have to, they don't, they don't have a reason to really know how we lobby and what kind of a lobby effort we have, but we have to be very strategic about what kind of a lobby partners do we bring on and who has what relationship. It's all about relationship. 
Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so it, it is going to be a transition to a very different team that we're going to have to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking about transitions, beach restoration, mm -hmm. this is people are ready for all their beaches to be restored and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And we're getting close to finishing the current kind of wave of beach restoration mm -hmm. that we're looking at, right? Yes. Yes. Well, the biggest one that we're about to complete, which is North Ponte Vedra um, Beach Renovation Project, it is probably one one of the most tasking projects uh, projects in terms of coastal protection. Um, so the projected completion date was August, and we're two months ahead of time. So we're we're right. looking at the end of June that we're going to have a finished dredging project which means that we'll probably have to close a couple of days uh, towards the end of June, sometimes around 24, 26. Uh, okay. But it is really for the betterment of the beach. Mm -hmm. um, and the significance of this project, I cannot speak enough about. I mean, it's not just about the protection of the homes. It is about the protection of your ecosystem, your turtle, everything. Mm. So um, it is $38.5 million project. Mm. It is entirely paid for by the state appropriation and the tourism dollars. So our residents um, ha doesn't have to pay a dime oh, yeah. that's for this protection. Okay. And this project and in our board has been very cognizant about, um, you know, the maintenance of it. Um, long story because and I'll make it short. Um, in order for us to be qualified for continuous support from FEMA for a beach like this, now this is an engineered beach, which means that you'll be qualified for a Category G if there is hurricane. Category G is for engineer beach, which is that you have done something to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have to have a very active maintenance plan, which means that you're going to replenish it when you know there's a loss through Nor'easter. Um, the maintenance plan is going to be paid for, and our board has been very vocal about it by the home, uh, the the beach from homeowners. Mm. So there is uh, two MSTU um, has been set up, which is the tax taxing district for certain services that they are the ones who receive the benefit from. Mm -hmm. So um, the are they ongoing, receiving that well, or is there pushback? Well, there is no millage yet, so we'll see. Okay. So once okay. the millage is levied, maybe they will be. But I think most of the homeowners that I have spoken to are more, you know, more than grateful That's for this good. project. Cool. Yeah, it's it's amazing project, and and you should go out see it if you haven't already. I mean, the beach it's transformative. It's amazing. Really? So, um, you know, it's not just a FEMA project usually only gives you a little bit of a protection to your home, but this is a dredging project that's done by county. So not only it's protection of the dune, the home, but also is a expansion of towel space that we speak, which is really recreational space for our residents and tourists. So yeah, so we're excited about this. And I wanted to give a shout out of our beach um, coastal protection uh, team. I mean, this is a monumental heavy lifting project for them to be done in such a short period. And our procurement team, Joe Giamanco, who is our emergency management director, who's gonna be very busy for the next few months, yeah. um, is also spearheading this project with Damon Douglas, uh, Steven, I mean, I can, you know, we have uh, Sloan, we have so many amazing team members on the coastal protection and they, they are dedicated. That's good. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, finishing ahead of schedule is always a good feeling. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now we'll leave on, Davey, you mentioned puppies and kittens earlier. I did. We've nice got some back. free dog adoptions yeah. happening yes. through the county, well, right? Actually, How does this work? Yes, we have a free. So apparently they are getting uh, overcrowded okay. at the animal oh, okay. control shelter, uh, the pet center. Um, I guess there's more feral, there's more, I don't know what happened, but mm. this season is a, a very busy season for Those our summer pet nights, center. Joy, I'm just yeah, saying, it's, it's, walk, it's yeah. crazy. So they are doing a free adoption event through the end of June. Cool. 
And I think so far, since they they're starting, there is twenty one puppies adopted. That's Aww. amazing. I, I That's saw great. all the pictures. I was oh, I was so tempted, but I can't. I got yeah. two. I got two <laughs> boys who will call me bros. I cannot do another. I cannot <laughs> do another right. dog. Get the dog and name it bro and be like, they're, they're talking so about the dog. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Well, that's that's awesome. Well, a lot of good stuff going yeah. on, Joy. We uh, always appreciate you coming in studio sure. and keeping us updated. And yeah, I appreciate you having I know me. you're staying busy, so uh, keep at it, and I look forward to talking to you Well, do. Again soon. Well, do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Joy. County Administrator Joy Andrews. So cool. This morning. A lot of good stuff going on. I love man. the rundown. Yeah, you get to know what's the pulse, what's going on. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, for sure.